it is a continuous it is a continuous thing. There is nothing like uh, benchmarks to show that growing has taken place from this stage to the next one. So when Sigmund and Ericsson they uh, agree on this one to say growing up is not a continuum. It has got distinctions at every stage of growth. So that's the first similarity. He believes that uh, development uh, happens in a series of stages. So with Ericsson and Sigmund, there is stage one, stage two, stage three, right. I'm not going to go at the face of who at my own face. <coughs> so that's the first similarity. The first difference that I'm, I want to bring out is that um, unlike Sigmund's um, theory of psychosexual stages, Erickson theory describes the impact of social experience across the whole lifespan. So you can see this psychosocial, it is uh, zeroing in at the impact of social experience across the lifespan. What did I say? You said no, no, no. This one. She's looking at me like this, but I know. This type of social is I'm just going to go the way they will do the old movie, but then it's under the next one. I know which next one. I know which next one. Were you here? Yes. Okay. I, I say, Ericsson's theory describes the impact of social experiences across the whole lifespan. So, whatever we are going to talk about, that's the basic, that's the foundation. How does um, this come to work? Huh? Describes the impact of social experiences. So whatever we are going to be talking about, in as far as this theory is concerned, we will talk about the social experiences versus growth. Uh -huh. Yes. Do you have any? Huh? Yeah. No. I have a red one. Nice. Yes. Red one. Yes. Okay, did we get that? If we are going to start off together there, then everything else is going to be easier. I am saying the lifespan is going to be influenced by uh, social experiences. Whatever you experience as a, as a social being, that is going to contribute to your development. Uh, what does Sigmund say? That's Ericsson. This one is Ericsson. What does Ericsson, what does Sigmund say? That's a good one. Now we're together. Ericsson says social experiences, they are going to, they have got an impact on the person's lifespan. What does uh, Sigmund say? Okay, in Sigmund's case, Sigmund has got um, some stages that have been the psychosexual stages. So Sigmund has got psychosexual stages. Sigmund says that the development is going to be influenced by sexual desires or sexual drives. So from a child as they are growing up, he divides them in a, according to sexual drives. So the sensory motor, here is another child that's getting sexual satisfaction because they're using the toilet. Others are getting that, the satisfaction through sucking. Development is has I mean sexual urges have put an impact on 
Excuse me, my What did you write? Yes. What did you write? So, like, Sigmund, um, uh, things that movement is caused by sexual crimes. Sexual crimes. Yes. I don't understand when, when you said, um, Sigmund said that a child is getting sexual satisfaction in the When the child is, um, all right, so it's, it begins with, now we're going back to Sigmund, it begins with um, the e, ego and super ego to say that every person when they are born, they are full of work. <coughs> When a child is born, it's full of what? The E, yeah? mm -hmm. The ego and the super ego are not yet there. So because the child is full of um, E, they are aggressive and they also are influenced by sexual rights. And they want to be satisfied there and then. So because there is that notion whereby every child that is born wants to be satisfied right there and then. And then because they are still young, they start developing that. How do they start by how do they start in the development? One, when they start setting it up. So that's one way of satisfying their sexual rights. From there, and then they move on. When they're sitting on the porch, that is also another way. As far as Sigmund describes them, you say that's another way of satisfying their sexual rights. So what? With Sigmund, it says that. Uh, we say the development is a conflictual process, full of conflicts. So as the child is developing, then the ego as well as the super ego, they are also developing. Eventually, the ego balances the in and uh, the super ego. So Erickson's theory of psychosocial development also Has got one of uh, one of the main elements of this theory is that uh, development of ego identity. So you can see here we are agreeing. One of the main elements of Ericsson's psychosocial sketch theory is um, the development of ego. Identity. So Erickson also believes or agrees to say a person be, uh, develops ego. So you don't develop ego from without him. Ego identity, as far as Erickson is concerned, he says that it is a conscious sense of self. Am I too fast? No. Okay. It is a conscious sense of self. That we develop through social interaction. So you see the difference here. Ego identity with Ericsson, he says that it is a conscious sense. When you begin to be conscious in a group. I can't do this because this. I can't be in public because there are people around. So that comes about because of social interaction. Ego identity. So a person is going to develop the ego through social interaction. When they now become conscious, a sense of uh, self, when it starts developing, then you become conscious. And then that way, you are building up your ego. This is who I am. You start identifying yourself. Uh, look at this. Erickson says that um, our ego identity is constantly changing due to new experiences and information that a person comes across. Is this how, what can you say about that? The ego of a person changing with every changing uh, environment or experience that a person comes into contact. Yes. Do you 
choose a new experiences and information which are required. When I go through different theories, I still see traces of Sigmund. However, the theory is that Sigmund has come up with people shoot them down. But when they're developing their theories, there are traces of Sigmund's theories in their theories. For instance, what I have just written here, you can see that somehow there is a footprint of Sigmund in this one. So we are saying ego identity is constantly changing due to new experiences and information we acquire in our daily interaction. Is it, uh, is it true? Ego changing because of the interactions that we are coming across or the new information that we are putting into our minds daily in day out. Can you give an example? Rachel, how does it feel? You're just taking it as Bible truth? Or you have done some studying before? No? So from where you have studied, is it making sense? <coughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'll we'll have some time to explain to you what the theory is. All that nonsense. Yeah, I can't you can tell. Alright, then can you give us an example? How does ego change with every new information that comes in into play in our lives? Information or new experiences? We might change something from Alan, and then from there, we might realize that. Whatever actually you do in the past might be wrong. So we start to be new things like something else different. Okay. New experiences, new information, resulting to a change of who we are or how we behave. So you may be in a in a new environment altogether. People with different parts are all there. You're supposed to drop what you believe in and then you pick up what is acceptable in that particular place. So, you are moving from one culture to another. You're supposed to drop what you believe and then you start living a new life. If this is going to be your whole life, for the rest of your life, it means this is who you are going to be. If you happen to move again to another place, you're supposed to, with new information, as well as new experiences, then you start growing up. This is growing up, right? You are growing up, you've reached a point where you're still able to wait and find a better place between the id as well as the super id. And then you find your place within the three realms. That's why I'm saying, somehow, they are still inclining or living on the segment from here. And uh, in addition to that, to ego identity, Erickson also believed that a sense of competence also motivates behaviors and actions. This is very true. A sense of competence motivates behaviors and actions. A sense of uh, confidence motivates behaviors and actions. Just this statement, what do you understand from that? Because I'm going to give you these presentations, but when you read them, you should be able to understand what it is about. 
A sense of confidence motivates behavior and actions. What does that mean? I feel like the way you think and the way you do things motivates the way you act. The way you think and the way you do things motivates the way you act. Yeah. yeah. That's according to her. According to Taisha, according to the three. Um Wait. <coughs> A sense of confidence motivates behavior and actions. <laughs> yes. The way I'm understanding that uh, confidence is it like um, a form of competition? You are asking or you are telling us? You are listening. Okay. So, um, if someone has developed a sense of confidence, uh, let's take an example in, in school, in class, there is always a competition. He's doing well in life. So here you find that some some particular some person um, is not or has just joined that class whereby there is a, a competition and you find that that particular person was somehow not working hard, not studying hard. So it will make that particular person change the behavior and try to work hard in order uh, in order for him or her to fit in that particular class, so it will uh, motivate that particular person and at the same time it will change uh, his or her actions in a sense of the environment as from the competition. So for you, confidence is competition? Alright, okay. Okay, um, for me. I'm just thinking that uh, the sense of confidence may be the sense of understanding the way of uh, understanding the things in a different way. So, like for example, the notion of gain may be saving as a new knowledge, saving in gain. You start behaving in a different way and you start also uh, doing the uh, same hands. Like, uh, which is those which, which things are totally different to uh, like the arts and the behavior in the past, uh, the past years of the past years. So, to me, I think this is good. This is a uh, way of being, uh, gaining knowledge. So, I like knowledge. <laughs> a sense of confidence is um he believes that a sense of confidence also motivates behavior in the life. This time around, when we are talking about confidence, we are yes, competition in a way, but confidence in this case, we are talking about the ability to do something with confidence. Like you should be able to do it. So a sense of confidence. Now you've got a drive. Within you to say, I really need to be good at say football. I really need to be good at maths. I really need to be good at psychology. That sense of competence, that sense of that drive is going to motivate you into certain behaviors and certain actions. I want to be known that I am one of the students at the UVU. Your actions and behaviors are also going to change. So whether you are going to be putting on very colorful clothes, whether you're going to make up more than everybody else, whether you're going to wear baggy pants, that's your... You want to stand out. You've got that kind of a drive within you 
which is driving you to do specific behaviors as well as actions. So when we're talking about confidence, we're talking about getting new abilities. That drive that is going to help you to be on top of the game, right? So uh, Erickson says that uh, each stage is concerned with becoming competent in an area of life. So at every stage, whether stage one, two, three, up to six or eight, every person yearns to be competent in an area of life. Whether you're going to be competent in class, whether you're going to be competent in sports, whether you're going to be competent in fashion, but in an area of life, you need to be, there is a, a drive in a person to be competent in one area. So, as a human being, when you are competent in one area, it gives you a sense of satisfaction. Without that, then something else happens. So at this point, we are still trying to explain what psychosocial development is all about. Mm -hmm. So everything that I'm trying to put down is for you to understand when we are talking about psychosocial development here you know, and what is it all about. So Erickson believes that <coughs> at every stage, a person is concerned with becoming confident in an area of life. Um, if the stage is handled well, a person will feel a sense of uh, mastery, which sometimes is uh, referred to as ego strength or ego quality. Ego quality or ego, ego strength. So if I happen to ask you during an exam to say, briefly describe or briefly say the following, ego strength. This is when a person feels a sense of mastery. When a person feels a sense of mastery, where is this mastery coming from? When one becomes competent in an area of life at a stage. If I'm going to say that sentence, it's going to be different. So get what you have understood. What is a uh, ego manager or ego strength? This is when a person feels a sense of mastery. Where is this sense of mastery coming from? This one is coming from uh, um, when a person becomes confident in an area in a developmental stage. If you are lost, let me know. So you read what you have written so I can help you. Again, we direct you. A person, you're just saying a person, I don't know where you're coming from. Um, it's uh, on uh, the ego quality. Mm -hmm. Say that uh, ego quality is a sense of mastery, which comes from. Uh, when becoming person, confident when person becomes confident. in an area of life. You can't be competent in everything. There should be some area that you can be confident in. Yeah. What are you reading? Have you managed to pick up everything? What are you reading? <laughs> When a, when a person feels a sense of master by becoming competent in an area of life, maybe that's there. When a person feels a sense of mastery by becoming competent in an area of life, you can be competent in several areas, you can be competent in one area. But at least there should be some sense of uh, accomplishment. Okay. So we are saying ego strength or ego quality is when a person feels a sense of mastery by becoming competent in an area of life. Please, when you're taking notes and you have missed something, say it out loud so we can. You should write notes that are coherent. 
So if a person manages a stage poorly, the person will merge with a sense of inadequacy. Who are management in a stage? Within a stage is equal to a sense of inadequacy. inadequacy. Is equal to a sense of inadequacy. Alright, so he also believes that at every stage, a person experiences conflict that serves as a turning point in development. At every stage, there is a conflict. In every stage, Ericsson believes that people experience conflict, and the conflict is going to serve uh, is going to serve as a turning point in development. Okay. So the question is, how can this? How does the conflict? become a turning point in uh, development. So, Emerson views um, these conflicts as um, centered on either developing a psychological quality or failing to develop that quality. So there is a conflict. You want to develop a psychological quality or you have managed to develop it or you have failed to develop it. So at that point, that's where now, that's a turning point of uh, development. If you have managed to develop it, it means development has taken place, right? Fully. But you have uh, reached a point where you're supposed to have a psychology, psychological quality, but you don't attain it. It means development hasn't happened. But you're supposed to move on to the next stage. It means that if you fall within the borderline, you are going to feel the sense of inadequacy. So, what is going to differentiate one, one's development stage and another? It is a sense of achievement. If you are going to be able to achieve psychological quality, then you have graduated properly into the next development stage. However, that does not keep you from going to the next stage. You will still go on to the next stage, but you've got poor results on the last development stage. So that conflict is that which is going to bring about a turning point in development. If you're going to develop well as you graduate into the next, it also means that the next one has got a proper foundation where you're going to start building on. So here is um <coughs> Here is a person whose race is like this. Development to stages. One, two, three, four, five. You move from development to stage number one to two, and your results are fair. When you move from two to three, you are supposed to build on to what was learned in number stage number two. But when you are experiencing stage number two, you have also failed, you're going to stage number three. How do you suppose your development is going to be like in stage number three? It depends. It is not going to be of good psychological quality, right? Yeah. Because your building blocks are very weak. But a person who is uh, not feeling a sense of inadequacy when passing through these developments, they are going to excel through life properly, better than this person. So we are saying 
there is a sense of conflict. So, is it like there is a, a chance? Uh, you feel yes, one in the past? Yes, yes. yes, there is. Remember, there is um, a sense of confidence that is more that one you get out here. So, you're feeling here. You have failed here, but you still have a drive within you to be confident in the air. So you still have to push on to make sure that you pass and then you go on to the next one. The fact that you pass this one doesn't mean you're also going to do a uh, You can pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail, or you can pass, 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 or you can fail, 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 fail and become um, a nobody in life. Because that's what you feel as a person. You feel like we are going to go on until the audience, whereby you see that there are other people that have a sense of satisfaction to say, I think I have saved my nation because I have accomplished everything. But then there are also other people in their old ages, they are going to see and be great. I wish I, I wish I, I wish I, I wish I. Because of, uh, it's determined by the path through which you have been traveling. So if you've been passing throughout, then in your old age, you're going to sit down and look back and say, I think I made it. And you can also say that you also die in one. You also die wise when you have achieved a lot of life. So during your period, make sure I do whatever you're supposed to do. Everything else that uh, you guys are going to sense. <laughs> Whatever the knowledge that you're supposed to do, make sure you do it and you do it to the fullest. Sorry, No? Boston says no. Okay, maybe the best way to put it is uh, make sure you train your ego. You find your feet. When you say no, it means your ego or your social interaction is directing you to the specific place. Can I go on? So we are saying these conflicts are centered on either developing a psychological package or failing to develop that package. So if you're failing, when you want to attain it, there is a conflict. So during these times, the potential for personal growth is high, but so is potential for failure. At this point, the point of conflict, where you want to develop a psychological quality. So it's either you will be able to develop it or you won't. So at this point, where now you want to develop that, we are saying. There is a potential for personal growth, but there is also a potential for personal failure. After the conflict, there has to be a resolution. Okay. So the resolution can either be your past or your health. This is now where personality develops. Reaching this point, do we have an idea of uh, what psychosocial development is all about? If we can uh, be asked to describe psychosocial developmental theory, would we be able to bring out random ideas of what that psychosocial development is all about? It's possible? Okay, we can start randomly. Just pick out what you remember. Okay, psychosocial beliefs, one, two, three, four. Let's see how far we can go. I'm not going to mention names. Just, just see one. Uh, <laughs> now I have started reading. <coughs> I'm going to rub it. It's too short. Yes? Um, no, <laughs> 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 the, 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 the
competence, then motivates the, the behavior of action, the behaviors. Behavior of action. When we make an action, can you start all over again? You listen to what you say. Okay, fine. It's a sense of confidence, then we this then we this behavior action. All right. And down. Confidence at every stage. At the point which you know that development has. Has uh, okay. Let me just start again. Conflict that develop at a stage whereby you know that development has been shown. Conflict at every stage where development is shown, whether it is development or there is no development. Yeah. The the high um, chances of Developing or not developing after the conflict. There's a potential of developing or not developing after a conflict, yeah. Equal strength. Equal strength, which is what? Sense of mastery. Sense of mastery. Rachel, where does the sense of mastery come from? Um, comes from. The person develops a sense of uh, confidence. Okay, so we can move on. Let's now start with our first psychosocial stage, which is known as trust versus mistrust. Is um, between birth and one year. This one is the most fundamental stage in uh, life. Yes, Psychosocial stage. Psychosocial developmental state. I was describing what psychosocial field of development is all about. Now we are looking at the psychosocial stages. <coughs> Did you check on your friend that that's PC? There's no question. She's back, but there's still something that's we recorded our scene last time. She's good. I know she's good, she's here, but there's one person that's missing. Who is that? Yes. Is she here? She. Her people. She's a she had a few in All right, so we're saying this is a very fundamental sketch in life. Um, why is it fundamental? Because this is the time infants utterly are dependent. Infant is utterly dependent. <coughs> the trust or the development of trust is uh, based on the dependability and uh, quality of uh, child's care. 
the development of trust. The development of trust. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is based on the dependability and quality of the child's care. Kind, 
and makes the child earn trust that the influence the child to trust the person until the caregiver of the experiences he or she might have had. Okay. So the idea is uh, helping the kid or helping the child to develop a sense of trust. Mm -hmm. Trust in children. Then you have to trust the development. What happens? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. One if, um, let's say, this, the child. Uh, Successively develops trust. He or she will feel safe and secure in the So, what if um, someone writes uh, when a child uh, develops, when a child develops trust, is free in the world? <laughs> <laughs> I will ask you. He is free in the world. Since you say that he is safe and secure. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Who are you? Mm -hmm. I can't see. Who are you? 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 Okay. Who feel safe and secure mm -hmm. in the world? Mm -hmm. Caregivers who are inconsistent, emotionally and available, contribute to here it has to be a home. So, I was asking that when someone writes uh, a child with trust, okay, the child that develops trust is free in the world, or the child that develops trust um, is free in the world. It's free in the world? Yeah. Free in the sense of what? Since you said the uh, safe and safe. What, what yeah. kind of freedom are you going to be from everything? It is possible. It is possible, but you can also see its dangers. What you can do saying that someone is free uh, means that uh, the, person, uh, the person is safe and safe. So, an example that I uh, know that I mean, the uh, I'll give example from the places. So, whereby someone who is staying in the city, whereby uh, in terms of uh, security wise, in that area, maybe it's not safe. So, when the person is saying that uh, now I'm free since I moved from that location to another location, so now I'm free. Maybe the person is feeling safe and at the same time is feeling secure. An example, uh, like the person uh, who was staying in Tandy for some years, yes. then maybe after some material problems, then these people are uh, removed from the neighborhood to this, uh, uh, this, uh, you know, so that maybe they will feel safe and safe and safe. And so I will ask him, the words when you meet them, they say now. Did I say now I'm free? Yeah. In terms of the city, but I don't know. So I recognize that. If someone can write that the child who trust is free, it's free at all. It is somehow true, but you need to qualify it. What kind of freedom are you talking about? It is true. They are free. They are set, they are free to express their mind. They are free to do things, 
it's possible, but you just have to codify what kind of people are you using about. So it's, it's, it's okay. So we are talking about uh, from birth to one year, right? Remember? We are talking about characteristics of the land development from birth to one year. So we are saying the quality of uh, or the development of trust is going to depend on uh, the developability of the caregivers. Are they dependable? Is the child sure to say, I am, uh, <coughs> I am safe? Can they trust them? There are times when we, we lie to kids. There are young ones, yes. You may think because you're big, you can get away with a lot of things. But as you're doing that, you are also developing something in them. So in this, at this point, if you're lying to kids, you're promising them something, and then you don't give them. They are thinking to say, this world is not safe. You are told to, you're going to have A, but the A is never going to come to you. Instead, you're going to have something else. Here is a mother who is telling the child to say, eat, I'm going to give you a sweet. So the child is busy eating because she's anticipating to get a sweet by the end of the eating. So she finishes and there's no sweet coming. Okay, maybe it's day. Tomorrow, the same thing happens. And again and again, what is happening? The child is now starting to develop that mistrust whereby they say, where there is no trust, there is a fear. The child becomes afraid. She is afraid because she thinks that the world is inconsistent. Today, you give her the sweet when she finishes. Tomorrow, you don't give her. For the mother, she feels like she's uh, getting ground because she's making the child to eat. I am going to tell her I will give her a sweet, but I want to give her. Tomorrow, I will tell her I will give her a sweet, but I will give her. The next day, it's inconsistent. Today, one thing. Next day, the other thing. What is happening? You are building this trust in the little child. So, when the caregiver is consistent and emotionally available, it means the child is also going to develop trust properly. When you are talking about being available emotionally, we are talking about that. attending to the child's needs. This is what I want to attend to. She is crying. What is wrong? You find out. So she knows. She trusts that if I am, if something has happened to me, I always have to. My dad, or I always have to. My dad, or I always have to care people who's going to take care of us. So she trusts that whatever happens, that um, I'm good. My someone has put my back. So when they, when the trust is very strong, even as they grow, you get to hear them talking to an old person and tell, I'm telling my dad what is happening because she has uh, built some trust in her father to say. My dad is a superman, my dad can protect me, my dad is above everything else. So there is a sense of trust in that. But then you also see that there are other kids, when you tell them, dad is coming, they are running. What is happening? The dad is a, a scarecrow. So there is a mistrust. So where there is mistrust, there is a fear that develops. So, psychosocial state one, trust versus mistrust. So, at age one, I mean, zero from birth to one year old, there is that building that takes place. And then the second stage, which is a uh, autonomy versus shame, shame and doubt. Autonomy versus shame and doubt. 